I know a lot of you are like, what took you so long to come back to El Paso? I don't have a good excuse, but I hope this makes up for it. <laughs> Man, I have some history in this town. I've been coming here since July of 1997. Yeah? Used to perform on the west side of town over at Bart Reed's comic strip. I was here on my 21st birthday. I'll never forget. I'll never forget it. And that's the last time I drank in El Paso. Uh -huh. You guys don't mess around. It was my birthday. I'm hanging out at the club. And they're like, it's your birthday. I'm like, it's my birthday. You want a drink? Sure. So I started drinking and drinking and drinking. And then the staff was like, do you want a party? I was like, I want a party. You want to dance? I want to dance. I passed out and I woke up at some place called the OP. <laughs> now see, you guys are clapping and you're laughing because you know. I didn't know it was an alternative nightclub. I'm from LA, I thought OP stood for Orale pues. And that is a messed up way to sober up. You know, I'm at the club, I'm dancing, you know. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey! <laughs> there was a little guy behind me going, Pikachu! <laughs> Yo también soy Pokemon. <laughs> no! But it was kind of crazy. I was getting checked out by guys. I was like, oh my God. And I know they were checking me out because they're looking at me like I look at tacos. <laughs> but then I thought about it. Oh my God, I just turned on a man. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> man, I call, I call my girlfriend. I say, you better not mess up. I have options. I have a memory, uh, a few years back, I was doing a show at the comic strip, and my idol, Mr. Paul Rodriguez, was in town doing a benefit. He calls up the comic strip and he says, he says, uh, hey, listen, I'm doing a benefit up the street, ¿sabes qué, vato? I'm gonna come down there and I wanna do some shots, unos tequilas and unos tacos, I'm like, oh, let's do it. He shows up to the club and he says, all right, get in the car, let's go. I go, where are we going? We're going to Juarez. Juarez, let's eat some tacos here. I can't afford you here. <laughs> let's go to the other side. <laughs> so we wind up on the other side and we wind up killing some tacos and you know, we wind up crossing the border. And when we crossed the border, it was uh, a few months after I taped a, a bunch of water commercials here. You guys remember the water commercials? And then they pulled me off the advertising because they said I was too fat to sell water, whatever. <laughs> So we're crossing the border and immigration was right there and they're checking the cars and we're in a blue van. My buddy Jim, who's all sitting over there, was driving and uh, <laughs> Border Patrol comes over to the window and he goes, he opens the door and he sees me. He goes, oh my God, it's you. You're hysterical. And I go, what do you think of this guy? And Paul was like, hey, what's up? 
And the guy was like, oh my God. And so we wound up taking pictures at the border. And it was so funny because we're outside the car and we're pretending to be arrested, right? People are driving by going, let go Rodriguez and Pikachu go. They're American, puto, let them go. Priceless. We crossed the border and Paul's like, hey, I want to go hang out and have a good time. He went to this place off the tank called Jaguars. It's a male, you know, gentleman's club, whatever you want to call it. So we go in there and I'm like, oh my God. As soon as we walked in, I'm like, I'm thinking Paul's going to be all, you know, shh, I don't want nobody to know I'm here. Goes over to the DJ and the DJ's like, all right, ladies, look who just walked in, Paul Rodriguez. All of a sudden, there's like 32 lap dances that stop like that. And all these girls, they bum rush Paul. And I'm like, wow, I got to get funnier. So we're hanging out there for a couple hours. We wind up outside in the parking lot. And this girl jumped into the car. And she's like, oh my god, Paul Rodriguez, I love you. My mom is a huge fan too. Here, please, please, please. And whatever you want, okay, ven back. Come here, come here. Here, please talk to her on the phone. Ora. He looks at me in the front seat and he goes, Hey, tu iglesias, here, be me. <laughs> he put me on the phone with the girl's mom. I'm like, hey, senora, how you doing? Yeah, you know, uh, your daughter, she's a real angel. Yeah, that's what they call her here. <laughs> yeah, man, I love Paul. Like I said, Paul's, the, you know, one of the main reasons why I got into comedy. And he used to mess with me a lot. Trust me, in my last special, I talked about how I had a Volkswagen Beetle. It was a true story. I really had a beetle and I got rid of it because I got tired of the fat jokes. When you're a fluffy guy and you have a little car and all of your friends are professional comedians, oh, they'll make you cry. Paul especially. How the hell did you manage to squeeze inside of that? No, hombre, I have never seen a car expand before while someone was inside of it. How do you get a stretch mark on the windshield? That's what I want to know. When you fart, does it go faster? One after another after another. <laughs> And you know what it is? It's karma. Because 10 years ago, I did a joke about Paul Rodriguez on TV. I used to be on a show on the Nickelodeon network called All That. Some of you remember? Yeah. That was me, a lot smaller. I was only two X's. I was a dos X, yeah. <laughs> anyway, as soon as the TV show season was over, they gave all the cast members gifts. They gave this one girl TV, this one kid a DVD collection. Since I was the only one who had his own car, they gave me a car alarm with a remote start to it. A lot of cars have those now, but think back 10 years ago, there was only a few that had the <laughs> My friends went, where'd you get that? I looked at him and I said, Nickelodeon. That's bad. I go to show it off to everybody. I showed my mom. I said, mom, go to the car. I got to use the bathroom. I left you a present. <gasps> oh, a present, okay. So she goes to the car and I started the car from the kitchen. <laughs> to run outside. Mom is not the devil. <laughs> look at, look at, look at. Cha -cha. Cha -cha. Nickelodeon. Oh my God, mijo. Oh my God, you scared me. Me sacaste un pedo, mijo. Oh my God, mira, smell, 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 mijo, smell. I wind up doing a show in Hollywood at a comedy club and I'm working with my idol, with Paul Rodriguez. As soon as the show was over, we go, you know, we're walking out the door and he walks up to me and he says, you know, I like the whole fluffy thing you do. It's catchy, sounds cute, keep eating. <laughs> we walk outside and my car is parked there first because I showed up late. So I'm, you know, my car's right there and Paul walks by. All right, take it easy. He walks right in front of my car and my friend goes, dude, show him your car, show him Nickelodeon. And I couldn't help it, you know, freaking <laughs> Hey, Nicolachi, what the hell? What is this? Paul. Nickelodeon! Hombre, cabrón, pinche fluffy, you gave me a heart attack. You take it easy. Valet brings his car around, a brand new Porsche 911. The car was nice. You know, it pulls up. And, you know, <laughs> valet gives him the keys. He turns around and looks at me. Hey, tú, fluffy, check it out. I'm like, whatever, it's not Nickelodeon. <laughs> chup, chup. The door pops open. <laughs> chup, chup. Trunk. I'm not through yet. Chup, chup. Chup, chup. 
HBO. A lot has changed, El Paso. A lot has changed. One thing's for sure, I'm still the fluffy guy. And I say fluffy because that is the politically correct term. For those of you that don't remember, I used to say that there were five levels of fatness. Reason why I say used to say is because now there are six. Uh-huh, I met the new one in Las Cruces. Uh, the original five levels are big, healthy, husky, fluffy, and damn! People ask, what could be bigger than damn? The new level's called, oh hell no! What's the difference? You're still willing to work with level five. Example, if you're on an elevator and you're with your friend and this really big guy gets on and you and your friend look at each other and you're like, damn. But you still let the big guy ride your elevator. That's the difference. Level six, you see walking towards your elevator. Oh, hell no. That's the difference. The guy that I met was six foot eight, 614 pounds. Uh -huh. Oh, hell no! And he was offended at my show. Not by anything that I said, but because of the fact that now at the shows, I started selling t-shirts. And apparently, I didn't have his size. Keep in mind, I go all the way up to 5X on the t-shirts. And he was like, you don't have my size. I was like, dude, I didn't know they made you. I have up to 5X. I don't have X. The picture of a dinosaur on the back of the tag, you know? Seriously, the same guy you see now is the same guy you'd see outside. I don't change, you know? You're not going to walk up and go, Gabriel, can I talk to you? I'm not going to be like, be gone from me. Gabriel is my stage name. I'm not even Mexican, I'm Scandinavian. No, trust me, I'm the same pendejo you'll see outside. I don't mind, I love it, you guys. Trust me, you guys make it possible for me to have an incredible life and take care of my family, so I'm all for it. Not a problem. Trust me, right now, it's so crazy because I'm still adjusting to people walking up to me. I'm checking into the hotel, and they already knew me, which was crazy. I go like, uh, hi, I'm checking in. Here's your key, sir. What? Um, um... We know it's you, sir. <laughs> I think that's awesome. I needed that like six years ago. One time I was trying to check into a hotel in Chicago at one o'clock in the morning because I missed my flight. Nobody's at the front desk, just a little bell and a sign that said ring for service. So there I am. Ching. Ching, ching. All of a sudden, I heard this. I hit a bell. <laughs> All of a sudden, this lady came out just. <laughs> Are you the one ringing that damn bell? <laughs> what the hell you want? Um, I'm checking in. You know what time it is? It's tomorrow. <laughs> oh no, I missed my flight. Mm-hmm, whatever you say. What's going on out there? Girl, you gotta see this. I got a big ass Mexican showing up late as hell. Okay. What's your name? My name is Gabriel Iglesias. Iglesias. Yes, Iglesias. Okay, Iglesias. Okay. E G L. Uh, no, 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 no. It's Iglesias with an I. With an I? But you said Iglesias. You didn't say Iglesias, you said Iglesias. It's Iglesias with an I. Mm-hmm, whatever you say, it's your damn name, okay? Mr. Iglesias with an I. You know, that's bad for you. Oh, this right here? My grandmama lived to be 100 years old. Smoking? Minding her own damn business, okay? <laughs> Mr. Iglesias with an I. 
Okay, I found you in the system. I got you for two nights, full-size bed, non-smoking. I requested a queen-size bed. And you would have got a queen if you'd have been here yesterday. But it's tomorrow, and you're lucky I'm talking to you. <laughs> Mr. E. Glacius, what I I. What's the I stand for? I need a bigger bed. <laughs> What's going on out there? Girl, you got to see this. Nacho Libre is tripping. <laughs> Give me a hard time. A lot has changed though, man. For those of you that don't know by now, I finally became a dad. Yeah. Thank you. Hell yeah, he's 10. <laughs> Surprised me too. <laughs> yeah, they found me. <laughs> and it's not what you think. I didn't discover that I had a lost child. It's just that I hooked up with a beautiful woman who had a pre-started family. So basically I became a stepfather. You know, I just took over the payments. <laughs> Best part for me is that my new son looks exactly like me. He's fluffy too. 10 years old, 162 pounds. Yeah, he's a little, damn! And he's the cutest kid. You talk to him, his name is Frankie. He's like, Frankie, what do you like to do? I like microwave burritos and PlayStation. Me too. Only problem is he wakes up early, five o'clock every morning. Hey bro. What? I'm hungry. <laughs> Me too, make something. <laughs> and he does. I can hear him in the kitchen making hot pockets, you know, freaking. <laughs> and he opens the door and doesn't close it, and the whole house freaking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hot pocket, delicious. Oh. Oh my God, and he's so cute because right now he's going through puberty and I think it's hysterical. His mom doesn't think so, she's like, no. I go, yeah, I caught him checking out a girl. How do you know? I was looking at her too. <laughs> she was <laughs> And I told my girl, I said, baby, don't worry. If he has any questions, I'll be the man. I'll take care of it. Because I went through puberty at 10. And she's like, oh, thank you. I said, don't worry, I took care of it, you know. Hey, I went through puberty at 10, I understand. Plus, I had cable, so it was hardcore, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, what's the difference now? Is that now you can program channels not to work. You couldn't do that 20 years ago. You couldn't block a kid unless you stayed up. My mom knocked out at 10 and right around 11.45. The following program has not been rated by the Motion Picture Association of America due to its graphic sexual content. Viewer discretion is advised. I was 10 years old, I lost my mind. I'm sitting on that couch all of a sudden. Are you ready? Uh-huh, oh yeah. Yeah! Oh yeah. Yeah! Are you ready? And you know what's crazy is I know what's happening at my house now. Because one night I heard, Yeah! <laughs> what's he doing? Becoming a man. <laughs> and I was curious. I'm like, I wonder what he's watching. So I started flipping through my channels, trying to find something that would spark interest. Sure enough, he's watching Cinemax. Uh-huh. And I know that's what he's watching. That guy's clapping. Hell yeah. <laughs> Cochino. Yeah, I know. I know that's what he's watching because out of my TV, I'm getting direct sound and then I'm getting like a little delayed echo down the hall. You know, so it's like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I saw him the next morning. I said, what were you doing last night? Nintendo. Yeah, whatever. You're playing. Wee! <laughs> and now he's like, mm. uh huh, whatever. Dude. Oh, I'm sweating up here. The whole front row, you guys are like, it smells like carnitas. <laughs> he smells delicious. Oh. Big guys, I don't know what it is. When we get hot, we smell like food. 
We should have our own cologne, huh? From the makers of Tres Leches. What's that smell? El taco. I'm a dork, I know. People ask me about the voices all the time. They're like, do you do that just on stage or do you do that in public too? I'm like, no, of course I do the voices in public. I have to make myself laugh. You know, I like doing the voices in places where people can't see me. Like drive throughs Oh, I'm evil at a drive through man, except the one by my house because they know me. I mean, they really know me. I can show up at 2 in the morning or 2 in the afternoon, you know. Welcome to McDonald's. How can I help you? Yeah. Let me have... Pull up. I did an order. Gabriel, pull up. Whatever. Other places I've had fun, IHOP. Look at some of you, IHOP? Yeah, let me explain this one. Next time you go to an IHOP, look for the podium. Usually on the weekends, they'll have the podium set up right at the front door. And when you walk in, they'll have a host, and they'll ask you, how many in your party? And you tell them, two, three, four, whatever the case. And then when it's time for your seats, they'll call you with the little freaking, you know, they got the microphone on the side of the wall, and they'll go, paging party of four, paging party of four, now serving. When that party walked away, I grabbed her microphone and I said, Paging Mexican party of 47, Mexican party of 47, now serving. And the whole restaurant was like... <laughs> All the guys in the kitchen, on the way! I love IHOP. I go too much, you guys. I was at an IHOP one time during an earthquake. It wasn't a big one. It was enough to feel it but not freak out, you know. I live in California, so we get them a lot. But if you're not used to that, you're going, ah, earthquake, you know, and I'm sitting there, and I just wrote it out, you know. Freaking earthquakes, man. You gotta choose which one you want, you know? You want earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, fires, floods. I live in California. I'll take the earthquakes. You can sleep through them, you know? And then whenever they happen, you never believe it's an earthquake. You're like, is it an earthquake or a big truck? You know, seriously, you'd be like, oh. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Smell, 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 smell. Oh my God. But seriously, you can go to work and people are talking about how they were sleeping, you know? Did you feel that tremor last night? <laughs> you can't sleep through a tornado or a hurricane. And I said that down south and people were like, yeah, you can. I said, not if it hits your house. I've never seen that interview, you know. Sir, what happened to your home? I don't know what happened, see. I woke up this morning and this son bitch was flipped over. That's the darnest thing, you know, I got a truck in the tree, my dog is down the street, I can't find my wife, but that's for a whole nother reason altogether, I don't... I was asleep. Sir, you were asleep? Damn right I was asleep, I got me one of them Tempur-Pedics over there. <laughs> Get her done! That's what I'm saying right there. I love that impression, you guys, I love doing that. Every time I do it, somebody's like, hey, that's the redneck cable guy. <laughs> Mexicans, be careful. Because we have rednecks too. We do. And they sound exactly like the white ones. You guys are real quiet, huh? You don't believe me? Watch this. White redneck? I tell you what! Mexican redneck? Sabes que we? Uh huh. White redneck? Ding, 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 ding. Mexican redneck? We put words and moves to that. Bailamos con el tuca, bailamos con el tuca, bailamos con el tuca, 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 tuca. Ahua! Same guy. So be careful, man. I had to take it easy with the voices once I got one of my girlfriend. She, uh, she used to think it was cute, but then, you know, I scared her. <laughs> One night we're in the room and she's like, ooh, what are you gonna do to me? And I was like, you're gonna get it. <laughs> Stop doing that. <laughs> yeah. 
we used to role play. We used to play White House. Oh, that was so much fun back in the day. I'd wake her up at three in the morning. She's like, who is it? I was like, you know who it is. Ay, señor, I don't speak English. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's about as political as I get now, you guys. Things change. People ask me, do you get political? I'm like, no, not really. You know, what's your take on Barack? I'm like, well, he's, you know, he's a lot smarter than the last one, that's for sure. I love his ass, man. Some people didn't want Barack in office only because he was black. Come on, you guys. You know, he's Barack. He's not Snoop Dogg. You know, it's not like he's going to come out. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. What do we do? Here we go again. Mr. President, Mr. President. Yeah! No. Gotta change it up, you guys. A lot of things are changing. A lot. Got the relationship now, it's going good. I love my girlfriend. She's here in the house tonight, too. It's awesome. We rarely fight. And I think that's so freaking cool. And I know why. It's because I do this for a living. Uh-huh. And she knows whatever we argue about will eventually end up right here. It slows her down. You ought to see her. You know what I think? Go ahead. Say it. Say it. Uh-huh. Yeah. The only problem I have with my girl sometimes are her friends. I don't like her friends because they're haters. They are. Look at that guy's clapping. Yeah, I know, man. It sucks. Every time I leave the house and I go out of town for the weekend, they show up and they start throwing little monkey wrenches in there, you know? So, he's not here? Where is he? How come you're not with him? What's the story? What's the deal? How long have you been together now? You're not engaged? You're not married? What's up? Is he going to drop Frankie? What's the word? What's going on? How come you don't have a ring? Norma has a ring and she's a puta. How come you don't have a ring? So, I'll get these messed up phone calls at like 2 in the morning when I'm on the road, right? Hello? <laughs> Baby? Yeah? Are you okay? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Nothing. I'm just here at the house, watching Cheaters. <laughs> Great. Oh, wow. I just that almost fell. <laughs> Woo! If I fall now, show's over. Yeah, there'll be people outside. We're standing here live in front of the Plaza Theater where authorities believe Fluffy lost control. Seven people were reported injured. Three were rushed to the hospital. Authorities had this to say. Damn! <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, they'll be interviewing people. Man, what happened? It got dark! Sir, what did you see? Se cayó Pikachu. I know. But no, anyways, let me finish to tell you what happened. So my girl started tripping out, and I started getting these weird phone calls. Finally, I got tired of it. I said, you know what? I don't need this. You know, I don't need it. From now on, when I take off on the road, no more phone calls. Look at that guy. Yeah. Are you here by yourself? Whatever, dude. Anyway, here's the thing. I took my girl to the Apple store, and I got her an iPhone. I got myself one, and I said, from now on, we're texting each other. And believe it or not, she was cool with that. Because anytime she would send me a text, I would reply like that. I could be anywhere. Freaking in the bathroom, freaking cling. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm blowing it up. I love you, Sam. And she replied, oh my God, me too. I love you. <laughs> it sounds so stupid, but it was working out perfectly until one night I got drunk. Oh, you want to hear this? You want to hear this? So check this out. I'm leaving a comedy club in San Jose, California, and I'm walking back to my hotel room, which is one block away. As I'm walking, I pass in front of this bar on the corner called Cine Bar. It's got all kinds of cinema and movie memorabilia in there. It looks cool. 
I'm walking in front, and there are people in that bar that just left my show. So I walk in front, and I heard, Fluffy! Hey, let me buy you a shot! I was like, well, you know, I don't want to be rude. <laughs> Can't have that, right? <laughs> so I walked in. I said, what's it? You know, I'm on my way back to my room. I just do a couple shots, whatever. So, you know, one shot, and then somebody, me too. All right, me too. Come on, let's do it. Me three, me four. Fifteen shots of tequila later. <laughs> It occurs to me. I think I should go. I start walking towards the door. I took three steps. The cold air hit me. I got dizzy and I fell. Hard. I know I fell hard because when I hit the ground, I farted. Oh my God, I farted. My buddy Martin ran over and he helped me up off the ground. You okay, you okay? We stumble back to the hotel room. I sit down in the lobby and I'm just like... Are you okay, Gabriel? I'm okay, man. Where's my phone? I gotta let my girl know I'm okay. You're holding it. Oh, thank you, Martin. I love you. I love you. You're a good friend, man. You're a good friend. He goes, what are you doing? I'm a text. Dude, just call her. No! If I call her, she's gonna know something's up. I'm a text her. Watch. Baby, I made it back to the hotel. I love you. Jesse face. Send. How did it go? <laughs> I farted. <laughs> I shouldn't tell her that how much did. Okay. It went good. Send. Cling. What did you do after your show? Oh, here we go. <laughs> My buddy Martin is like, Gabriel, man, Gabriel, don't tell her, don't tell her you're at a bar getting drunk, man. Don't tell her. Martin, I have to tell her the truth, bro. <laughs> We're cool like that, man. I can talk to her. I could, I could tell her anything, man. She's not like your old lady, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Tripping all the time. Hey, Martin, take the pictures of the cochina off the internet. Whatever. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, did I say that out loud? Forgive me, bro. <laughs> Gabriel, lie. I can't lie, man. Lie! I can't lie! Are you that honest? No, I just won't remember the lie. <laughs> Why get in trouble two times for the same stupid thing? You know what I'm saying, bro? So I sent the message. Baby, I made it. Oh, delete, delete, delete. <laughs> Baby, I went next door with Martin to Cine Bar. Had a nice time. Kissy face, kissy face. Kissy face. <laughs> Send. Cling! Lucky you. Wish I could have been there with you. Tell Martin I said hi. I love you. <gasps> oh my God. Martin, I just told my girlfriend I was at a bar with you and she didn't get mad. <laughs> what the hell is she doing? <laughs> Man, she told me to tell you hi. She don't even like you. So I scroll back to read what she read, and apparently my stupid iPhone has this memory spell check feature, and it didn't recognize the word Cine Bar. It flipped it and turned it into Cinnabon. So apparently at 10 o'clock at night, my girlfriend thought I was having cinnamon rolls with my friend Martin, which normally would sound like an ugly lie, but considering her boyfriend is known as the fluffy guy who loves chocolate cake, it sounds real. I was like, oh my God, Martin, check it out. My iPhone lied for me. I love you, iPhone. Blackberry can't do that. <laughs> a month later, my girlfriend heard me tell the story and she's like, that's a funny joke. I go, it really happened. How come you didn't tell me? I said, the phone didn't let me. A lot of things are going on. Um, in the house here tonight, you guys, I'm very happy she was able to make it. A lot has been going on. My mom, once again, here at my special, was in here. Where you at, Ma? Oh, there she is. Andale. She almost didn't make it here tonight, you guys. Almost. Uh, a month ago, my mom got admitted to the hospital. She got a little sick. Somebody forgot to take their medication. 
Uh-huh. I don't need it. ¿Para qué? ¿Para qué necesito? Ay, whoa, ay. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. Uh-huh. Remember that? Remember that, right? Anyway, ma. Sorry, I have to throw it at her so she makes sure she takes her medicine. Got to give my little shout outs right now. It's funny because this is my uh, this is my third special. In the last special that I did, I did a bunch of references to police officers. And they weren't exactly flattering references or jokes. You know, I was just kind of like saying, you know, the whole donut thing. And um, <laughs> Apparently... They became fans in some weird way because I started getting phone calls to do police functions. In December, I had five Christmas parties. I got a phone call from my agent, and he's like, Gabe, check it out. CHP, California Highway Patrol, wants to hire you to do a show. I go, really? What does it pay? They want you to donate your time. I think I'm busy. <laughs> They told me to let you know you have a warrant in the city of Fresno, California. I'm like, oh, they're good. So I did the show, and I'm going to tell you guys right now. I'm going to tell you guys right now. It was one of the scariest shows I ever did. A room full of nothing but cops. Everybody's drinking a lot. And I'm scared because if they get ghetto, who do I call? You know, I got to go out in the parking lot and find some gang member. Hey, back me up. So the show went good. It went so good that they asked me to do another show in California, in San Diego for the California Highway Patrol, Border Division. And I tried to make up an excuse that my car wasn't working right. They said, no worries, we understand. They sent a patrol car to my house with a freaking uniformed officer. And I was like, oh my God. Best part was I didn't tell my family he was coming. Oh yeah, sometimes you have to create your own entertainment. It was hysterical. Five o'clock rolled around, I'm like, he should be here any minute. Sure enough. Frankie! Frankie, can you get the door, please? Okay, Gabriel. So he goes to the door, comes back, and he's got like, you know, he's like, Gabriel. Gabriel, the police are here. Why are you whispering? Because something's going to happen. <laughs> When he said that, I'm like, oh, I got to freaking let him have it now, right? I said, oh my God, Frankie, they found me. <laughs> What do you mean, Gabriel? I got to go, Frankie. I got to go take care of your mom for me, okay? I love you. I love you. No! I gotta go, Frankie. And I saw the officer. I said, pretend you're arresting me. I want to freak out my kid. No problem. Turn around and put your hands behind your back. I can't reach. Just hold my hand. Walk me to the car. Just walk me to the car. Dude, just walk me to the car. He doesn't know the difference, dude. Just walk me to the freaking car. Come on. I get to the cop car. He throws me in the back seat, right? And slams the door. And I ask him, is it okay if I yell out the window to freak out my kid? You want to use the microphone? Yeah! Freaking... Here you go, sir. And he hands me the microphone, and I said, Frankie, this is the police. We have your father. We're coming back for you in one hour. Do your homework. <laughs> one minute later, my girlfriend calls me. You're an ass! What's he doing? He's doing his homework. That's called parenting, baby. <sighs> he got even with me, though. He totally got even with me. I walked in the kitchen one morning. He's sitting there and he looks at me and he goes, Gabriel, I have a question for you. What's a hooker? What did you say? What's a hooker? Where did you hear that? I was watching HBO and there was a commercial for a show called Hookers at the Point. It said this Saturday at 11.30, check out all the hookers. What's that mean? Oh, that means we're going out Saturday. What's a hooker? Let it go, dude. Tell me. You don't need to know. Tell me. Frankie, that's for adults. You said it was an adult. I said you eat like an adult. <laughs> And what you do in the bathroom, you are grown up, trust me, but you don't need to know what a hooker is. He throws a fit in the kitchen. Hooker, 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 hooker. What are you doing? Hooker. He won't stop. I don't know what to do. So I snapped. Quit it! And he stopped. And apparently his mom heard that. Quit it! Quit it! Mm -hmm. And as soon as I yelled, oh my God. He went from being my son to my girlfriend's little cub once again. And here she comes from the other side of the house, mama lion to protect her little, you know. I can see her coming. Why are you yelling at my baby? Oh my God, he wants to know what a hooker is. Tears, right? You said if he had any questions, he could come to you. I didn't know he was going to ask me that. 
You said, don't worry, baby. I'm the man. I'll take care of it. <laughs> Tell him. Are you serious? Tell him now. <laughs> Frankie, you want to know what a hooker is? Yeah. Those are your mom's friends. don't like me anyway at least now when they come over the house Frankie who's at the door hookers are here <laughs> oh, yeah. noticing we got a soldier in the front row man how you doing bro US Army thanks for coming man what's your name I, I can see yeah I can read the last name Fuentes but what's your name what's that Ricardo, you're in El Paso. Ricardo, cabrón. Save Ricardo for over there, okay? Aquí. Ricardo, chingada. I want you to sound like you're in one of those novelas. Who is it? It's Ricardo. Did you bring a pistola? Sorry, man. I'm just giving you a tough time, man. But thank you for coming, man. Thank you for what you do. Seriously, bro. I did a tour recently called Around the World in Eight Days. We went to uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, Germany, Turkey, uh, Greenland, Alaska, and Los Angeles. They had to drop me off. <laughs> Iraq was crazy, you guys. When you land in Iraq, it's not like landing here, you know, in El Paso, where the plane comes in. <sighs> Over there, people take shots at the planes. So the plane comes in like this, like that. And then at the last minute, <sighs> The whole plane smelled like chimichangas. It was terrible. Oh. That for me was one of the scariest shows of my life, man. I'm in Iraq, middle of the night, outside, no tent, pitch black, helicopter flying, and there's a spotlight on me. And I'm supposed to be funny, and I can hear him. And the crazy part is that I saw a sign that was very familiar. They have subways in Iraq. I was like, is that, what is it? Is that, it's subway. Oh my God. <laughs> Ew. I got back to my room. They have the stupid commercial there too. In their language. Oh my God, I almost lost it. Same one, freaking. Hale, hale. Hale, hale. Hale, hale. Hale, hale. Hale, hale. Hale, Oh my God, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. <laughs> it's crazy, man. You know what was crazy, bro? When I was in Iraq, they wanted me to go to different bases, but they wouldn't let me go because they have to provide you with a helmet and a bulletproof vest. And apparently the military does not have a big and tall. <laughs> they put that 75 pound vest on me. It looked whoa, like a whoa, bulletproof whoa, bib. Whoa, whoa. Like if somebody shoots my snack, I'm okay, you know? <laughs> Oh, stop right here. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> no, 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 no. Mm -mm. Oh, man. We flew into Korea. That threw me off a little bit, too. We go to check into the hotel, and it was kind of scary for me because the phone had a big sticker on it that said, do not discuss classified information. Someone is always listening. That's freaky, because I'm calling my girl back home, right? Hello? Hey, baby. Oh, my God, where are you? I can't tell you. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so worried. Don't worry, baby, everything's cool. Oh my God, I miss you so much. Where are you? I can't tell you. So I'm trying to give her clues, right? No, 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 <laughs> Germany? What? I'm kidding. Oh, thank God. I wish you were home. Why? If you were home right now, we'd be in the room. Really? What else? And we'd be laying on the bed. Check you out. All of a sudden, I heard a voice that said, what else would you do? Sorry, proceed, proceed. <laughs> Blockers over there. But I enjoyed myself, you guys. We have a lot of fun. I made the reference to the police officers, and you know, sometimes there's problems everywhere. Cops used to mess with me a lot. That's why I love getting recognized now. Now they're just like, oh, it's you. I'm like, oh. <laughs> that wasn't the case six years ago. 
I did a theater show just like this one in the city of San Antonio. As soon as the show was over, San Antonio, ¿qué pasó? As soon as the show was over, you know, I'm hanging out in the lobby, taking pictures and stuff, and then we go outside, and I get stopped in front of the theater, in front of my own poster. How sad is that? You know, freaking, what are you doing? Uh, standing. Do you have any ID? <laughs> Keep going. All right. Now, uh -uh. every chance I get to have fun with him, I will. Last time I got stopped, the cop came to the car all mean. You know why I stopped you? I looked at him with a straight face and I said, Because I'm black! <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, man. What's up, player? He turned the flashlight on, you guys. <laughs> get the hell out of here, stupid. <laughs> yay, yay! <laughs> Oh, and by the way, thank you to whoever brought the chocolate cakes in the back. I got them right before the show. Thank you very much. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Somebody brought Chico's tacos too. I thought that was great. Uh -huh. Now, you guys here know what I'm talking about, but everybody that's watching at home, they're like, Chico's tacos? Oh, what the hell is that? It's an El Paso tradition. If you come to El Paso... Just know that that's, you know, that's right here. That's, you know, that's the tradition in El Paso. I ran into people in other places like Chicago and New York. I'm like, where are you from? El Paso. And I say, Chico's Tacos. And they're like, oh. <laughs> like, wow. Yeah, that, that's hardcore. It is the craziest food I've ever tried, you guys. Craziest ever. Reason is, they, you know, they give you these little taquitos and there's like a sauce and you pour it and it, like the taquitos flow and then it absorbs and... I never thought I'd see the day where I could drink a taco. Yeah. And you gotta have that at the end of the night. Don't try to freaking plan out events after going, you know? They'll say, oh, we're gonna eat at Chico's and then go to the movies. No, don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> You'll be sitting there like, you know, hey, this is a good movie, huh? This is the one where Nicolas Cage comes out and... <laughs> anyway, he plays the bad guy in this movie and it turns out really good. Then all of a sudden... <laughs> you're running by people. They're like, chicos. <laughs> no paso tradition. <laughs> you know what's funny? is that a year from now, there'll be people watching this all over the world, just like the first DVDs in Canada, Australia, and Europe. This DVD will wind up somewhere in Australia, and there'll be people in Australia going, What the hell's Chicas? <laughs> Crocky, we gotta go. We gotta see Chicas. <laughs> you watch. <laughs> people freaking out. I say, we must go try Chicas. <laughs> it sounds splendid. Yes, it does. Drink a taco. I never thought I'd see the day. I'm going to try it. <laughs> El Paso it is. But no, I got Chico's tacos and cakes. Uh -huh. One night at one show, I received 11 chocolate cakes. And it was local, so I took them home. And that is an argument that nobody in this building has ever had at 3 o'clock in the morning. Because you don't just walk into the house with 11 cakes. You make some noise. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> And I walk in with the last two cakes and my girlfriend's in the kitchen and she's like, what the hell is this? I'm trying to be cute. It's a bakery. <laughs> Where did you get all this cake? I said, baby, the people at the show brought it. Are you going to eat all of it? Eventually. I'm not going to do it in one hit, you know, freaking two hours later. Oh. Clear. How do you know someone isn't trying to poison you? With cake? Are you serious? It's like you live by the cake, you die by the cake, you know? No! Uh-uh. So, we're going back and forth, right? We wake up Frankie, and Frankie walks into the kitchen at 3 o'clock in the morning, and he's all, What's going on? Oh. 
Where did all the cake come from? The people at the show brought it. Tell them I said thank you. I'll tell them you said thank you, Frankie. Gabriel, how come they bring you cake? Because 10 years ago, I did a joke where I said, I love chocolate cake. Now people bring me cake. You should say you love Transformers. <laughs> I'll start doing it. Right? So my girl's like, baby, put Frankie to bed. I go, Frankie, you got to go back to sleep. Mm -hmm. Want some cake? <gasps> yeah. So I grab one of these tiny cakes that somebody brought me, one of those little tiny ones that has the plastic cover and the sticker on the side, and I handed it to him. I go, here. He goes, a little piece? I go, Dude, it's a small cake. You could have the whole thing. And the look that came over his face at 3 o'clock in the morning was like he got a gift from God. Because I said, here. And he was like, oh, he Take it to your room. Domine Patri, I went to go take him to school the next morning. He's in the bathroom crying. <gasps> hey, are you okay? <sniffs> My stomach. Your stomach? Too much cake? Yeah. Was it good? Hell yeah. I'll see you in the car. 20 minutes later, he comes to the car and he's all sweaty. <sighs> you all right? What happened? I blew it up. Get in the car. <sniffs> I get him to school 45 minutes late. And usually when I drop them off, you guys, I leave them on the side of the school and they have like a drop-off zone with cones and a supervisor to make sure that your kid gets off safely. When you're 45 minutes late, there's nobody there. So I left them in front of the school. And apparently that's a no-no. You're not supposed to do that. I didn't know. You know. Go for it. I'm not supposed to. I know it. Just go. You're late. Go. Mm -hmm. Out of nowhere, here comes the principal. And I know it's the principal, because he's like, it's the principal, it's the principal, it's the principal, it's the principal. I'm like, dude, relax, I'm 30, I don't give a damn. <laughs> here comes the principal. Sir, sir, this is not the designated drop-off area. Please take your child to the other side of the school. You cannot leave them here. I was like, watch this. Señora, no sé lo que está diciendo. Estoy dejando a mi hijo aquí, aquí va la escuela. Su mamá no se levantó. Yo no sé qué está pasando. That's how you do it, homeboy. That's how you do it. That principal was amazing because she was like, Usted no puede dejar su hijo aquí. Saca la vuelta a la otro lado de la escuela. Allá sí, sí, aquí, no, no. Allá sí, sí, aquí, no, no. Yo no soy pendeja. Did that really happen? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. I felt so bad because when I picked up Frankie, he's like, the principal yelled at me. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm going to tell my mom. No. <laughs> it's all right, dude. You know, we're having a good time right now with his mom. And it sucks, you guys, because we got into a fight that weekend. Uh, that was uh, not too big, uh, but it was like, it, it could have been prevented. Uh, my girlfriend's back in the car up out of the driveway, and somebody had left like this. You know, I guess they were moving, and they left this big box behind the car. And my girlfriend's backing up, and I go, baby, baby, there's a box. I got it. <laughs> Even Frankie was like, mom, you told you there was a box right there. Shut up. So we get inside the house, and I looked at her, and I said, what the hell is your problem? And sure enough, Frankie walks up. Oh, you guys are going to fight. I'm like, oh, shoot. No, no, no. I'm sorry, Frankie. We're not fighting. You're yelling at my mom. No, no, no. No, no. I love your mom. She just didn't hear me. You're not mad at her? No, I'm not mad at your mom, baby. I love you. I love you. See, I love your mom. I love you. I love your mom. Everything's cool. You want to go play some video games or something? Come on, I'll go play with you. Oh, okay. Okay, come on. I'm not mad at your mom, dude. Come on, let's go. Say bye to your mom. Bye, mom. Come on, let's go. Come on, we're cool. I'm not mad at her. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. See, some of you are laughing. Some are like, can he really say that? <laughs> I snuck it in there, huh? <laughs> No, no fighting. But I had to make up the fact that I yelled at Frankie. I go, Frankie, whatever you want to do, let's do it. Gabriel, okay, can we go to an arcade? Arcade? Dude, you have a Nintendo Wii at your house. 
And then I had a flashback to 20 years ago. ¿Qué qué? Arcade, cabrón, tú tienes un Nintendo en la casa. You have a Nintendo at home. I'm like, oh my God, I'm turning into my mom. Come on, dude, let's go. I take him to this big old freaking arcade, right? And I felt so out of it because I didn't know you couldn't put money in the machines anymore. I'm, I'm man, I remember quarters. I'm thinking, here, five bucks. And he's like looking at me like, mm. what? Go play. And he's like, he came right back. All done. I'm like, dude. I didn't know this. You have to go to another machine, put in money, and then it gives you a card, and then you swipe that card to play video games. And the game he wants to play doesn't cost a quarter. It costs $3. A game, big old machine called Dance Dance Revolution. Some of you know this game? Yeah, maybe sort of. For those of you that don't know the game, it's pretty simple. It's a dancing game, and there's a big screen, and then arrows come out to music. And whatever arrow comes out, that's the arrow you have to step on when it comes out. Kind of cool, but all the music is techno. And it's loud. I know I'm getting older because I'm like, they gotta turn that down. <laughs> dance, dance, revolution, revolution, get ready. And the kids are like, I'm ready. Select music. <laughs> And that's what they dance to. Ready? Go! <laughs> Perfect. And the kid's like, woo! And I'm like, <laughs> I love this game, but they need to have something that's more fluffy friendly. So the fluffy people and parents can hang and enjoy. We're watching this game for over an hour. I told Frankie, let's go play another game and then we'll come back where the line goes down. The line never goes down. Great. So I'm watching kid after kid after kid. You know, I'm like, oh, serious? How much is it? It's three dollars a dance. Three dollars a dance? And then I thought about it. Well, I paid 20 two nights ago, so. I guess three dollars isn't that bad. <laughs> Now that I think about it. Some of you are clapping, some are like, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, whatever, anyway. So kid after kid, then I found something out. <laughs> you can always spot that one kid who you just know is gonna grow up to be a little bit more creative <laughs> than others by the way he plays the game. And all the other little kids, they know something's up. They're like, you gotta watch. When Benji plays, you gotta watch. Watch. Sure enough, here comes Benji, right? <laughs> dance, dance, revolution. Get ready. I'm so ready. <laughs> like, oh, 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 it's on. <laughs> Select music. <laughs> ready, go. This dude took off. <laughs> Wow! Frankie's like, I'm next! I go, you can't follow that! You better come over here and play some Street Fighter, man. Let me show you how to throw a fireball. <laughs> I had to make it up to him another way. I had to take him to Disneyland. I stopped going to Disneyland a long time ago because you know what? Those roller coasters are not fluffy friendly. Disney cares. That's why there's safety there. You know, they have all those different harnesses. And if you're over 300 pounds, just stay in the parking lot. You know, because they got the whole, you know. You're fluffy? Forget it. That's why I love a ghetto-ass carnival. You know those ones they build in like six hours? I can still ride those roller coasters. It's only one bar, three clicks, that's it. If it locks, good. If it doesn't, hold on. Plus, fluffy people never fall. We never fall. You know who falls? The skinny guy that got stuck next to us. That's who. Ah! More room. <laughs> But me and Disney, no. No mas. But I had to because I messed up. I fell asleep on the couch and I woke up all, you know, and Frankie was watching TV. He goes, Look here, bro. Look. Disneyland. And I was like, Dude, what's the big deal? Okay, it's Disneyland. What? You never gone? Dad never took me. 
all mother <laughs> Next morning. <laughs> Welcome to the magical world of Disney. We walk in the park, he's all happy. <laughs> we get into the middle of the park and he's so funny, he starts getting winded. I thought it was hysterical. Because up until then, I only saw myself get like that, you know? Just <laughs> so to see a little 10-year-old version of <laughs> Hysterical, I was dying. I go, Frankie, you want to take a break? Mm-hmm, Gabriel, this park is big. I'm like, see? It's not a small world after all. I'm like, whatever, dude, sit down. So we're sitting down, waiting. All of a sudden, I start getting recognized at Disneyland. And that, for me, was cool. You know, people are walking by. Fluffy, can we take a picture? Sure. More people. It's him. It's that guy. Pikachu. Now I have like 10 people around me, like I'm a new character at the park. Best part is Frankie starts getting annoyed. He's like, mm, why don't they leave you alone? Frankie, these are the people that come to the shows. They're the reason why you have a PlayStation. Thank you. I'm going here and I'll start taking the pictures. <laughs> so I told Frankie, Frankie, what ride are you going to get on? Ride? Yeah. What ride do you want to get on? I don't want to get on a ride. What the hell are we doing at Disneyland? <laughs> the commercial said that Disneyland is the happiest place on earth. Oh my God. That's IHOP. <laughs> what the hell are we doing here? We're hanging out at IHOP and... You know, we started talking, and it was kind of like a little bonding moment because Frankie, his dad isn't in the picture, and my dad wasn't in the picture. So for some reason, you know, we got a little connection going on, and it's pretty cool. Frankie told me something, and it got me right here. He goes, you know, I'm, I'm talking to him. I said, Frankie, I says, do you ever want to, you know, talk or see your real dad? And he goes, you are my real dad. I was like, oh. <laughs> and then he followed it up with this. I want my last name to be Iglesias. And then his mom walked in. Oh, me too. They work together. They work together. I knew it. It's a tag team. This was like whatever. Uh, another time I took him to IHOP, you guys. Too funny. We walk in there. We got my buddy Noe. Went to go eat. Tore it up. Walked out into the parking lot and discovered that my car had been stolen. Yeah. <laughs> I was full to him like, oh, we got to walk. My buddy knows he's trying to be helpful. He's like, Gabriel, don't you have OnStar? I'm like, yeah, but it's in the car, stupid. <laughs> well, can't you call the 800 number? Maybe they can track your car. I'm like, oh, shoot, no, you're a genius. So I pull out my cell phone and my freaking, you know, OnStar card, and I call him up. Freaking OnStar. For OnStar service, press 1. Para servicio en español, oprima el número dos. To report a lost or stolen vehicle, press three. One moment. Thank you for choosing OnStar. This is Kim speaking. How can I help you? Kim, they just stole my car from IHOP. I'm very sorry, sir. Can I get your OnStar number? Actually, Kim, I can't read the card. It's kind of chewed up. Uh, can I give you like a credit card or social security or something? Sir, just give me your name. Okay, my name is Gabriel Iglesias. Okay. Hello? Hello? Kim? Kim? Do you spell that what I... I? <laughs> Star. For OnStar service, press 1. Para servicio en español, oprima el número 2. Un momento, por favor. I speak Spanish too, motherfucker. I love you, El Paso. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much. Thank you.